children in the cross in the cross be my glow my glory Until my red soul, my soul shall find. I wanna find red beyond. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, because he first loved me.
And you would have the phone in your room and you would talk on the phone and you thought you were in love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you just talk on the phone and you wouldn't talk about nothing. <laughs> what you watch? <coughs> nothing. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Amen. And you would talk and you would talk about nothing. Amen. <laughs> and your mama sometime would put you on punishment and you couldn't talk on the phone. And you thought you would die. Amen. Amen. You know, it's one thing to love somebody. But it's another thing to love somebody's soul. Amen. Amen. I love Jesus so. I love him so much. Amen. Amen. I love him so much. Amen. Because of all that he's done for me. I hear folks say, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know where I was when he found me. You don't know what he brought me from. You don't know where he brought me to. If you could know, you would love him like I love him. I love him. Oh, how I love him. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Let's get into the word. Amen. I'm going to go back to that Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, the prophetic book of Isaiah, the second chapter, and I'm just going to lift up the fourth verse of that book to give us a word for the times that we live. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah the second chapter and the fourth verse and it reads on this wise. And he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any. I just want to just share some thoughts with you this morning from the topic. Study war. No more. Study war. I'll pray with me, if you will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you continue to dwell with us in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Move among us and have thine own way. Lord, work upon the hearts and the minds of this people that have gathered here today that they might receive the word that you've given unto your servant. Father, I furthermore request of you that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. They might not see me, but Christ in me. Bless, bless somebody's soul. Cleanse and make them whole in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I do pray. Amen. 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 Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Amen. 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 Study war. No. Wouldn't you just like to see a world where there was no war? Yes. You know, we are preoccupied in modern times with war and preparation for war. If we're not in war, then we're preparing for war. And, you know, there's never been a time in history war was not evident someplace in the world. <coughs> Even in the Bible, the relative peace and tranquility of the Garden of Eden was interrupted because Cain 
went to war with his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. Killed him. The various reasons that we give for war seem just and right in our own eyes. But rarely do the victims of our war uh, 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 think that they're justified in any kind of way. If you read the Bible, you see war between the Jews and the Assyrians. You've got the war between the Jews and the Babylonians, and not to mention the Jews and the Philistines, the Moabites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and countless others over and over and over again. That's for those of you that are Bible studiers. We've seen many nations against nation, and we've seen... Jacob against Esau, David against Goliath, Saul against David, and the list goes on and on and on in your Bible. And when you study the history of nations, we see the cause and effect of war. Mm -hmm. Oh, would you study the glorious campaigns of men like Alexander the Great? You study about the grandeur of Rome and how they conquered nation after nation. And you study about the French Revolution and you study about the American Revolution and the American Civil War and the Spanish-American War and the World War I, World War II and the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Desert Storm and countless other skirmishes all over the world and our preoccupation with war is distracting us so bad that sometimes we can't focus on anything else. We turn on the television and the first thing we want to find out is how it's going with the war. We turn on the radio, the first thing we want to find out is how it's going with the war. We want to find out who bombed who and who killed who and who got this and who did that to the other. And that's what we want to do because in modern times, we can watch this stuff in real time on television. See, back in the day, you had to wait for the newsreel to come on. You had to go down to the movie theater and you had to get your news about what was going on with the boys overseas from the newsreel at the movie theater. You couldn't do like you do today. Jump on TV and turn on CNN and, right. and see what's going on in real time and right. uh, what got bombed today and what happened yesterday and all that kind of thing. But see, we can see the devastation today. We feel the pain of millions of hurting people. Whether it's decimated families that are resulting from the World Trade Center bombing back in 2001 or, or the weeping and wailing of children as we watch them on TV and, and families' livelihoods going up in smoke in Iraq or as we watch pregnant women being taken away bloody on stretchers in, 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 in Ukraine, we can watch it on TV. And we see so much war, we yearn for a day when there won't be any more. We yearn for a day when we can turn on the television and laugh. All right. Rejoice and celebrate with people around the world because we're just at peace. When that day comes, I'm talking, I'm telling you, it's going to be a day of rejoicing. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You know, in his last Sunday morning sermon, before he died, it was in a national cathedral on March 31st, 1968. Martin Luther King declared, I believe today there's a need for all people of goodwill to come to a massive act of conscience and say in the words of the old Negro spiritual, we ain't going to study war no more. This is the challenge facing modern men and women. We ain't going to study war no more. And th those words sting. They're at the center of the hope of the world right now. And, 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 and everybody seems like, or would think, you would think that everybody desires a day when we won't study war prepare for war, have to protect against war. 
But we can't imagine. It's hard for us to imagine a day, but it's coming. It's coming. Don't worry about it. Imagine a day when men will differ but not feel the need to kill somebody just because we don't agree on something. We don't have to resolve our differences by me blowing you up or me shooting you down. Amen? Imagine a day when men might want more land or they want more water or they want more oil or more natural resources, but they won't feel the need to kill somebody to possess it. Imagine a day when we'd be too busy enjoying improving upon the quality of life that we won't want to waste time and energy studying ways to destroy each other. You know, the old slaves, they didn't even know anything about uh, 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 disrupting or destroying nations, but they were looking forward to a day when folk were going to put down their swords and their shields and study war no more. You know, I, I know, as a believer, I know that as long as the world is populated, men, men going to be uh, warring against each other. As long as we got money and we got people who want to spend money, there's going to be war. But I'm looking for the day when, when, when God's rule is going to come. Yes, yes. And we ain't going to study this war no more. The Bible here, even though this text was written thousands of years ago, <coughs> Isaiah here is the focus. And he's talking about men studying war no more, even back then. And that message was controversial just like it would be today. Because Isaiah was talking to King. And he constantly clashed with kings, just like anyone would be clashing today. You know, folk that stand up against a king or president or a leader or whatever who is waging war is automatically labeled a expatriate. It's a mark against their patriotism, anti-patriotism, if they stand up against them. Anyone that stands up against Putin is going to be arrested. They're going to be thrown in jail. They got 15,000 people right now that they've thrown in prison just because they stood up against his unjust war. Yes, sir. Isaiah was doing the exact same thing back then. He was standing up against kings who were uh, 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 perpetrating unjust wars. Amen? Amen? He denounced it because they were hypocritical. They were claiming that they were uh, uh, waging war for holy reasons, but they weren't living holy lives. Uh, they were giving misinformation to the people. Man, does this sound familiar to anybody? They were giving misinformation to the people, saying that they were taking the land, and they wanted the land, and they were warring against the people to cleanse the land for holy reasons. But they were living unholy life. And this kind of talk was dangerous. And there were some people that viewed it as treacherous. And they expected the man of God to just wave the flag of Judah and to calm the people and just to preach the word of God and, 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 and to endorse the transgressions of the leaders. Amen? Amen. And a lot of the kings just listened to the word uneasily and dismissed it. But there was a king named Manasseh. He had had enough of this old man preaching this word. And the early Christian fathers uh, uh, say that they give a historic account of Manasseh taking Isaiah and, and having him placed between two planks and sawed in half. That doesn't sound familiar? There was a man named Navali that uh, was poisoned on a plane by Putin because he preached the, 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 hip, the, the hypocrisy of Putin all over the world. And, and, and strangely, his food was poisoned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, 
While Isaiah talked about how immoral the man that leads that was leading the war was the prophet, the, the prophet kept rising the hope for the people. He kept telling them that there was going to be a time when this was going to be all over. Amen? He kept looking forward in the not so distant future. He said the Lord was was coming with his salvation and he was going to come to Mount Zion or the place where God where, where they sought God and he was going to incorporate his his ways into their life verse 3 said and, and many people shall go and say come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for out of Zion shall come forth the law the word of the Lord from Jerusalem Isaiah saw a vision of a beautiful time that was coming. In verse 4, he said a time when they were going to transform their weapons into implements that would better the world. That's what this means. We're going to beat our swords into plowshares. Instead of spending our money on building weapons, a time is going to come we're going to transform that, the weapons, into implements that we can use for feeding the hungry. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending billions of dollars on making bombs, the time is going to come where we're going to spend the money on providing food for the hungry. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's the meaning of spears into pruning hooks, or in other words, spears into fishing hooks. Instead of spending billions of dollars on, on weapons of war or spears, they're going to spend it on feeding folk, hungry folk, all around the world. Amen. If they spent the money that they spent making bombs on feeding hungry folk around the world, there would be no more hungry. Amen. I'm just trying to Amen. share some stuff Amen. I've been thinking about all during right. the week. All right. Amen? Amen? But the most important thing he saw was that it was going to come a time where we're not going to even learn war no more. Amen. We ain't even going to study war no more. Mm. Well, you know, war has had its purpose. <coughs> Positive purpose for it. The first thing that war does for us is it reveals our weakness. See, Isaiah got on Israel's nerves because he constantly reminded them that underneath their appearance that there was this element of ruthlessness in them. The nation was God-fearing, but they spent a lot of time, they spent a lot of time in worship and godliness, but underneath the surface, uh, there was this ruthlessness in them. There was this greediness in them. There was this indecency in them. Mm -hmm. And see, that's like us, Americans. <coughs> see, we like to believe that we good. And we like to believe that we the moral uh, compass for everybody in the world. And everybody else is the bad guys because they assassinate and they annihilate and they destroy and they, they just to gain profit and power and control. But and we don't do that. But war has a tendency to strip that stuff away. And we see that we just like everybody else. Amen? We see our sinful nature. War reveals our weaknesses. War reveals who we really are. Amen? See, we, 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 we think we can uh, prevent war by by our uh, our uh, uh, institutions and by our uh, uh, organizations and, and but we really can't. Amen. When we watch one conflict after another, we resolve. You know, we gonna get together. We gonna stop this thing. And you know how we gonna get together? We gonna unite. So we we create something like the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And when we create the United Nations, we feel safe. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
we, we created the United Nations, we saw the fall of the Soviet Union. Some of y'all old enough to remember that. We felt like the nuclear threat was calmed and it dissipated. Amen. We saw the fall of apartheid. We saw we saw the collapse of the Berlin Wall. We and all these things gave us hope for international peace. We saw President Nixon go to China. We saw Jimmy Carter make make all these strides toward peace. We saw Bill Clinton make all these strides towards the global economy and everybody was making money around the world and then this other series of personalities came up. George Bush and Saddam Hussein went at it. They came on the scene and all of them talking about one had uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction and the other one had weapons of mass destruction and nobody ever found those weapons of mass destruction but we went to war because of it. Yes. Amen? Then we had some relative peace and all that was, was brought together and 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 and, and and, and, and we, we had some relative peace for a while, and, and the, the wars were brought to an end, and, 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 and we, we captured some leaders, and we felt good, and then we elected a man called Donald Trump. No. He made friends with a man called Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Amen? Amen. We tried to avoid seeing Many of us, we didn't want to see. But we knew something was going on. Because every time we saw his face, we wanted to change the channel. Mm -hmm. We heard his voice, we wanted to turn. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm talking yeah, about today. Yeah. Yeah. But besides our weakness, the uh, war shows our strength. Amen? Amen. But I want you to know something. Even though you're watching these big conflicts all around the world, you know, war starts small. It starts real small. It begins in your marriage. It begins among your children. It begins among your family. The first war started between two brothers. And it's the same thing today. The husbands and wives, they worship together, enjoy their lives together. They go to war with each other. The divorce court. And every weapon that they have, they use it against each other. Families go to war. Let one person die with a little bit of money. And the whole family go to war with each other. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about today. It ain't got to be much money, but just a little bit of money. And they'll go to war with each other. It ain't got to be no money. It might just be a house, a car. Amen? Neither, one, neither side has moral ground, but both are transgressors, sinners. You know, you got friends that sit at a table and they friends when they start. But 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 they start playing cards and and one will blame the other for cheating for the ten dollar pot. And before you know it, the whole thing escalates and the other one pull out a gun and shoot the other one for the ten dollar pot and go to war. Young man kills a store owner for fifty dollars in the cash register, and goes to war. It's the same principle. War starts small. The principle is the same. Your presence is a hindrance to my success. I got to remove the threat so I can get what I want. That's the essence of war. It's two girls fighting over a boy. It's two young men fighting because one uh, uh, supposedly dissed another. When we attack each other with sticks and beer bottles and and, and skillets and pots and rocks and bats. We use a conventional weapon. When we pick up a pistol or a rifle or a shotgun, we're using west weapons of mass destruction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even though only two people involved, our intent is the same. We want to destroy the other person 
And we don't care who gets hurt in the process. Mm -hmm. They just collateral damage. The young girl riding her bicycle. The young boy swinging on the swing. World conflicts, they begin small. What we see on the world scene is a magnification of what's happening all over the world on a smaller scale. That's why Isaiah made some people mad when he kept telling them that your personal tendency, your immoral acts, what's inside of you, what you're doing inside your home, the way you're acting, that your sinful ways are going to take this nation down in the room. Big wars start with little wars. It's all about sin, a man. Brothers and sisters, like I said, I just wanted to share some stuff with you I've been thinking about. I know I ain't give you much to shout about. All right. Yeah. But I can't I can't I can't shout you happy every week. Amen. Amen. Sometime I got to share something with you that's gonna get your attention. Mm -hmm. Make you think about something. Amen. 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 One thing that war does that people don't understand. You know, sometimes folk ask. And while you watch your television set, they say, why don't God just stop the war? Stop men from war. Well, you know, war creates a yearning. That's when the words of Isaiah chapter 2, they start having meaning on the inside for me. They create a yearning for a time that the prophet Micah talked about. He said it would be so beautiful that the wolf would lie down with the lamb. Mm -hmm. Together in peace, the people are going to sit <coughs> under the cool of the fig tree in the summer without being afraid. See, the more you hear about war, the more you long for a time that Isaiah talked about when men will turn their swords into plowshares yes, and their spears into fishing hooks. See, the more you hear about bombs going off and death and destruction, the more you learn, long for a time when God will lead us beside the still water and restore our soul. The more you see how weak and how fallible the present world order is, the more you start yearning for a time when the godly kingdom headed by Christ himself is going to come down. The more you see the heaven and the earth being shaken by the power of God, you ought to be thankful that the kingdom is still standing strong. All right, all right. You know the Lord has got to be busy in the time of war, but you've got to be confident that the destruction we see all around us don't have nothing to do with God. God is still in control. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And what you need to do is you've got to be busy showing some compassion for the victims of war. Mm -hmm. You got to pray for the soldiers and the families on the other side of the ocean that's just following the orders of their commanders and doing what they can to stay alive. Mm -hmm. You got to be busy praying for the will of God to be known and shown in the land far away. Mm -hmm. You got to be busy raising hope in the world that has been devastated. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is a hope that is based on nothing less than the blood of Christ. Whoa. That's why I heard somebody say my hope is built Whoa. on nothing less Whoa. than Jesus' blood Amen. and righteousness. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. I shall not trust the sweetest frame oh. but wholly lean Whoa. on Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you. On Christ, the Whoa. author and finisher thank of my faith. On Christ, the mediator between God and man. Right. On Christ, the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You got to continue coming to the Lord. When Jesus comes, the wicked are going to cease from trouble. When Jesus comes, the mountains shall be made low and the valleys shall be exalted. When Jesus comes, rough places shall be made plain and the crooked places shall be made straight. When Jesus comes, the old spirituals have new meaning. I'm going to lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside. 
and study war no more. Tell the world it won't be long. Jesus came and died on Calvary. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. It won't be long. I'm going to be singing my song. I'm going to put on my long ride robe down by the riverside. It won't be long, but crying days will be over. It won't be long, but crying days will be over. I won't have to study war no more. Men won't kill men. Women won't curse women. Boys won't fight boys. There won't be rumors of wars. No more gang wars. No more black against white. No more red against yellow. No more wars. Won't it be grand when God comes and take us back? Won't it be grand? Tell somebody about Jesus. That's what you got to do. When you see wars and rumors of wars, tell somebody about the Lord. Time is running down. Y'all got to remember what it says in the word of God. You know, we've been shouting down here a long time. But the Bible tells you, war, when you start to see these things, pestilence, mother against son, son against mother, uh, son against father, daughter against mother. You're seeing these things. Every day. Yes. Tell somebody about the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes. Stand to your feet. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch right now. Touch all those that are touched by this war. Those families, those children. Touch all those that are separated. Father, we ask that you give them hope. Touch the leaders, Lord, all over this world. Give them wisdom in order to guide your people. Lord, right now we ask you to send, a, send, a, send an angel and give comfort unto the Caver family. Yes, yes, yes. Bless that situation right now. Yes. Bless the Thomas family right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, bless this church as we go forward in your will and in your way. Touch whatever the need may be in this place. Send healing where the healing is needed. Send deliverance where deliverance is needed. Send hope where hope is needed. Bless right now. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.